Hi, welcome back. This week you're looking at collisions and car crashes. To start off with, we'll go through the learning outcomes for the experiment. So by the end of the lab, you should hopefully have an understanding of the difference between collision types and how to diagnose them in the lab. Um, so additionally to that, you'll be understanding the relationship between impact force, impulse and collision time. All of these are useful tools in describing different types of crashes. So for part one, what you'll do in the lab, you'll be looking at different collision types and classifying them into different collision types being elastic, inelastic, or partially inelastic based off the coefficient of restitution that you calculate, which is the E here, which is equal to um, the negative of the final velocity over the initial velocity of a car in a collision. So that will give you a value between zero and one, which will tell you what collision type you have. And in the next part of the experiment, you'll be looking at um, how a buffer can change the impact force and collision time um, for a car crash. So you will see the usefulness of having something like a crumple zone in your car um, by analyzing this equation uh, through your experimentation. All right. So for the first part of the experiment, you're looking at trying to calculate the coefficient of restitution for elastic and inelastic collisions. So just note on your cart, there'll be an M, which denotes the magnetic side of your cart. So when you want to use the magnetic side, just make sure that M is pointing down the track. Um, so what else do you have with your equipment? You've got this block. This is just to stop your cart from moving. Um, you've got your sensor down here. Make sure it's facing parallel down the plane so that it can actually pick up the motion of your cart. And the ramp itself doesn't have to be at a very steep incline. So just as long as it's moving fast enough to record your collisions on the computer. Okay, so I've opened up the car crash experiment in your fundamentals folder. And when you're ready, you just need to hit play and release your cart. And so it will go down the track and eventually when it hits the sense the magnet, it will come back and you'll register a collision. Okay, so once you've got your results, if you can't see your trends very clearly, you can hit this A button up the top and that does uh, a scaling for you, an automatic scaling. So now you can see your collision point a lot more clearly. So this top graph here is your position of the car, the middle one is your velocity, and the final one down the bottom is the acceleration of the car. So to analyse these, you just need to click this button up the top, which has a circle and a vertical line through it. And so now when you move your cursor through, uh, it'll tell you what the velocity is before your collision, and then if you move it down to the bottom, it'll tell you what the velocity is after the collision. So for the second part, when you need to do the non-magnetic collisions, all you need to do is reverse your card around so the M's no longer facing. And then in the final part where you're looking at um, using a buffer, this is the buffer that you need to use. Make sure when you place it on the track that you place it down horizontally like this rather than up upwards because um, it's not going to act as a very effective buffer if you're not uh, maximising the width of the actual buffer itself. So when you're ready, you just do the exact same thing, um, get it set up, have the buffer there, hit record and let your cart go. Okay, so that's all you need to know for this lab. If you have any more questions, remember to ask your demonstrator, otherwise enjoy. All right, now that you've seen what you have to do, I'll go through a few useful hints to help you get through the lab. So number one, um, understand the impulse equation here. Um, it's very important for answering some of the questions in the lab and for your understanding of what's actually going on. So just have a think about this equation and what would happen and under what circumstances your impulse would be constant and what that means for the impact force and the collision time. And lastly, just try to time manage while you're um, recording your data as there are a few runs that you need to do and it can take a while, so try not to run out of the time.